Last Sunday, we were looking at the well-known story of the feeding of 5,000. And I used three different teaching points that we could all learn from in this well-known reading. The power of provision, how we use our resources. The power of positioning, to be in the right place where God can use you. And the power of participation, that are you willing and able to get involved in God's mission. I mentioned that in relation to the second teaching point, the power of positioning. And I said last Sunday that we would come back today with a little bit more on what I meant by God's Spirit, God's Word and God's people, as I didn't have the time to expand on it on Sunday. The second teaching point I had for Sunday was the power of positioning. Or put it another way, how close are you to Jesus? In John's Gospel account of this story, John chapter 6 verse 9, John writes, Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. As we are aware in the story there is Jesus, there is disciples, there is a boy with some resources and a crowd of 5,000 excluding women and children. So it would be fair to say that there is a crowd maybe in the region of about 10,000 people. I opened up this section of the sermon by asking the question, have you ever thought why Jesus picked this boy? There must have been hundreds of Jewish boys and girls there that day. I went on to explain that for whatever reason, this boy had a front row position as Jesus taught, preached and healed the sick that day. So why did God pick this boy? After all, this boy didn't need a miracle. He had his evening meal. He was okay. He had five small loaves and two fish. So he had plenty. But I think the answer to this question is really simple. Because the boy was nearby. He was there with his meagre resources. And because he was there, God was able to use him. The point is this. The boy was in a position so God could use him. The boy was in a position for a miracle to happen. How close are you to God? And how do you position yourself so that God not only notices you, but that God can see you and use you? Matthew 6 verse 33 from the New Living Translation. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Two things here. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek God above all else. Is God first? Do you seek him with all your heart, soul and mind, as it tells us in scripture, and live righteously? That's a tall one, to live righteously. I think we all struggle with that. But if we seek God above all else and live righteously, then he will give you everything you need. What do you need? There's a question for you to ponder. But if you position yourself in such a place with God, for God to work, who knows what miracles God can produce in your life? I want to, as I mentioned on Sunday, give you three ideas to help you position yourself so that God can see you, God can use you, and God can bless you. The first one of this will be no surprise, God's Spirit. Every believer has the Holy Spirit's power within them. But sadly, not every believer releases the full power of the Spirit in their lives. Every believer has God's Spirit. We can each flow in the Spirit's power and the Spirit's presence. We can go into the positions that God is calling us when we are close to the Spirit and we listen to the Spirit. 
I want you to imagine for a moment you're sitting on a horse and that horse is ready and willing to be released. Maybe it's a Grand National or Ascot or some other big race. But you're the jockey in that horse. And that horse has the power to be released and to win the race. However, you as a rider of the horse, as a jockey, once the horse starts, you continue to pull the reins back on the horse. In effect, you stifle the horse's power. That is the effect of sin in our lives. The Spirit of God is ready to go, is ready to move, is ready to go at the clappers, as we would say in Glasgow. But you're not living righteously. Sin is holding you back. It is the reins that hold the Spirit's power back as the reins of sin. Because you are the jockey and the Spirit is a horse and in between both of you is the reins are the reins of righteousness in your life or is it reins of sin? And it only takes a little sin for you to delay the Spirit's power. We have to learn that the effect of sin has on the power of the Spirit. If you ask the Holy Spirit to help you deal with your sin, then the Spirit will. But as the old saying goes, it takes two to tangle. You have to play your part and resist the temptation to sin. And if you follow the Spirit's guidance on the journey you are need to you need to get round the track, to get to the finishing line, then the Spirit will lead you if you allow the Spirit to do so. Firstly, you need the power of God's Spirit. Secondly, you need the guidance of God's Word. God's Word guides us. Every believer has access to God's Word. Every non-believer has access to God's word. God's word is freely available to all. But not all read it. And if you do not read it, then how can you follow it? Imagine you are going on a journey. It's a long journey. What is one of the first things you do? You get a map. Or you may be going in these internet days on to Google Map or Google, Google Earth and you look at the journey you plan in and you key in your starting point and then you put in your end point and the sat nav or Google Earth or whatever it be works out the best journey for you if it's on foot if it's in a bicycle if it's in a car even if it's on a plane it will work out the best route for you to go from A to B this is where God's word helps guide us. If we want to position ourselves so that God can use us, so that we can come closer to God, then one of the things we have to do is read his word. To spend time in his word. To review his word. To pray about his word. To study his word. And to learn from his word. And when we do that, then God's map will open up and God, through his powerful spirit, will lead us to the wonders of heaven. And of course, like any journey, there will be ups and there will be downs. But that should not detract us from spending time in God's word. Today, we, about 20 or 30 of us, who are in a daily Bible reading group, Today we're started on the book of Acts and we're going to be reading Acts slowly, 28 chapters over nine weeks. You can do the math, that's about three chapters a week, so it's not a lot of reading. And I'm doing it slowly and deliberately because I want to, people to take time to read the word and not to read ahead because you've got another 10 minutes. But in those 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever it may be, to take time to pray about that word. What is God saying to you through that word that day? 
to go and study that passage? Was it a key, key phrase or a key word? You see, it's very important that we get into God's word because God's word will guide us. When we have the Spirit's power and the guidance of his word, then both of these together will lead to a life of righteousness, a life of joy, a life of fulfilment and contentment. Remember Matthew 6, 33? Seek the kingdom of God and above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Or try it this way. Seek God through his word and live righteously in the Spirit's power and he will give you everything you need. To position ourselves for God, we need God's Spirit and God's word. The third area is this, God's people. If you want to position yourself so that God will move in your life, then you need to surround yourself with God's people. Not exclusively God's people, for we have to live in the world. We have to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. But to have a core group of God's people surround you. Let me go back to the little boy in the story. Where was he? He was at the front. And he was at the front. And who could see him? The disciples could see him. God's people. Who was there watching the disciples? Jesus. God himself. So this little boy was there in the throes of God's people, the disciples. And God could see him. So it's important that we have godly people around us. Who will help build us up. Who will sustain you for the long haul. And who will support you through troubles and tribulations. You should position yourself around people who love Jesus. The disciples loved Jesus. And a little boy was there. Do you know some godly people who love Jesus? Then surround yourself with them. Surround yourself with people who are seeking God. Just as you are doing by watching this video. Who else is watching the video? Who else is a godly person that you could be with? Because miracles happen when God's people gather together and work together on a problem. That's another part of the story of the loaves and the fishes. God's people work together and with the help of Jesus Christ, they fed 10,000 people and had 12 baskets left over. That's a true miracle. But that true miracle was achieved because this little boy had positioned himself with his meagre resources and allowed God to use all that he had. And through one little boy, 10,000 people were blessed. Friend, we are certainly stronger together than we are when we're trying to solve a problem on our own. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labour. If either of them falls down, one can help the other get up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, then they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm on their own? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. In the context of these thoughts, God's Spirit or God's Word or God's people on their own won't lead you into a position where God will be able to use you to full effect. You can have God's Spirit but not his word or associate with his people. You can read God's word. You can have head knowledge. You can know the Bible inside out. 
but not know God's Spirit or God's people. You can be in a church surrounded by godly people, yet not have his Spirit's power or his word guide in your life. However, if we intertwine these three chords, Spirit, Word and people, then you will be in a perfect position for God to use you and for God to move in your life and for God through you to bless others and for miracles to happen. God's Spirit, God's Word, God's people, the perfect positioning of position. Let us pray. Friends, when you think of these three things, God's Spirit, God's Word, God's people. In your own life, where are the strengths and where are the weaknesses? For any strength that you have, can you help someone else build up in that area? And for any weakness that you have, is there someone you can go to who can help build you up in that area? Because we're all Christians together, all seeking to be in the right position so that God may use us. If we bring our five loaves and two fish, whatever our resources may be before God, then God is able to use us when we're in the position before God. And once God is able to use us, we then in turn can go and tell others all about Jesus. Today, friends, three things. God's Spirit, God's Word, God people. Are you working and flowing in each one of them? If not, then draw a line in the sand and start to build. And if you happen to be listening to this video and you're not a Christian, but God brought you here for some reason, then can I encourage you to get into a good Bible-believing churches. A church that puts God's word front and centre. A church that honours God's spirit and flows in the spirit's power. A church where there's godly people. If you don't know Jesus and you want to know more about Jesus, then just close your eyes and pray. And ask Jesus to come into your life. To fill you with his spirit's power. To lead you to a church where his word is preached. And taught. And to take you to a place. Where there is God's people. Who will love you. And accept you. Just as you are. Now that describes you and you're unsure about what to do locally, then contact me, Andy McIntyre. You will get me at revpartysouth at hotmail.co.uk. Just contact me at Party South Church, and I will help you as one of God's people to find that place where there is God's word and God's spirit is spoken. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me this short video. I see it's over 19 minutes, which is a lot longer than I expected. But sometimes when God's spirit moves and he has got things to say, then time should not be a barrier. God bless. Take care. And enjoy the journey, the journey with Jesus. Amen.